Good morning and welcome to Grain TV for Monday, April 16, 2012. To my left is Logan Burgess and I'm Brock Shimano. The agricultural markets are down across the board in the overnight. Corn was down six and a quarter, beans off ten and a quarter, wheat off six to seven, depending on which contract you're looking at. And Logan, there's a couple things driving us lower in the overnight. Yeah, it seemed like uh, you know the Chinese markets in the overnight session were really pushing this thing lower. We saw added dollar in exchange, corn, soybeans, and soy meal all traded lower. Soybean on that front month contract was actually down about one percent, so that certainly didn't help out the U.S. futures uh, in the overnight electronic trade. I think that was kind of pushed lower here by that weaker than expected GDP growth number we saw come out late in the last week. Also, though, we see improved weather projections moving through this week. As we know, if we take a look here at this map provided by our friends over at Planalytics. That western part of the Corn Belt is still locked in a pretty severe drought in some places. The place to really keep an eye on here is northwestern Iowa, southern Minnesota, and as we were saying last week, you know, we've really seen this start to creep into areas of Illinois. That's really in sharp contrast to what we're seeing out east in areas of Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana, where soil, uh, the soil moisture is quite good right now. Yeah, and you know, that is interesting to note that we are starting to dry up in the northern part of Illinois. Um, and if you take a look at what, how we've changed from the last reporting period, we've seen an expanding uh, dry moisture content move across much of the planting area of the Midwest. Iowa, uh, Illinois, Indiana, all very dry right now. Mm -hmm. It is interesting to note, though, our friends down in the southern plains that have their hard red winter wheat uh, progressing along pretty nicely right now. They have received beneficial rains, so we continue to see their moisture content change to the positive side, actually get improve as we move through this growing season. Um, yeah, you know, well, we did see conditions kind of dry out here for most of the Corn Belt, uh, you know, since the last reporting period by uh, Planalytics here. But if we take a look here at where we sit right now uh, on the percent soil moisture capacity scale, on this scale here, 100 represents the soil is, a, is completely saturated. As you can see, you know, as we were saying, saying out east in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, uh, we're nearing 100 in a lot of areas. But take a look here in northwestern Iowa, southern Minnesota, that scales at about 50 here. And as you move into the Dakotas, it gets even lower. You know, we saw on March 30th that the Dakotas picked up a lot of corn acres. So this will be an important situation to keep an eye on here as we move through the growing season here. Uh, that's kind of going to wrap up the first half of the show. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back to watch the markets trade live. Well, it's definitely earned me more money. Just, just like Decatur, they were paying 70 cents more for, some, or for uh, summer corn there in August. We were hauling corn 100 mile for 40 cents, and we're making 30 cents, and I wouldn't even known that price was probably on there. I wouldn't have thought of calling Decatur, but when you go to the Grower's Edge page, then it, it takes all that running around out of it for you. Welcome back to Grain TV. The markets are open in Chicago, so let's turn over to the Fire Tip Trading Software for the live quotes. Looks like corn is down five and a half cents, beans are down twelve and a half cents, wheat is off six to eight cents, depending if you're watching Chicago or Kansas City. And it looks like once again the soybean market is a leader of the downside. We saw the dollar exchange sell off in the overnight. It looks like we're following through uh, early on in this session this morning. Yeah, Brock. Well, once again, as you said, soybeans are the leader to the downside. One thing that we've really been keeping an eye on here is the, uh, the managed money position in soybeans right now. Take a look at this chart. As you can see, they're extremely net long in soybeans right now. The blue line here is the managed money longs. The yellow line here is the managed money short positions. And as you can see, this thing has climbed well higher uh, from a net long standpoint than we were even last September. So actually, this week we saw them add about 8,000 uh, long positions to that net long. Uh, in the Friday Commitment of Traders report. Now, the, fr the uh, Commitment of Traders is kind of a trailing indicator. It shows the market composition on last Tuesday's action. So, you know, for short-term market move is, moves, it's not really going to tell you much, but for long-term trends in the market, it's a good thing to keep an eye on. And we did see a little bit of a change in this week's report. If we take a look here at, at how the ratio actually performed this week, you can see that we actually pulled back a little bit. On the vertical axis here is the uh, ratio of longs to shorts. So on here, uh, 30 would represent 30 longs for every one short that managed money is holding. We kind of peaked out there last week, and uh, in the most recent report here, we saw that pull back a little bit. So they did add to the net long, but the pace at which they were adding has actually slowed down a little bit here. You know, Brock, that's kind of what we're seeing for uh, the managed money position in soybeans. I know there should be some news out of Europe that might be a little bit supportive here to the U.S. Uh, wheat market. Yeah, we saw lots of chatter across the news wires this morning about European wheat situations and their winter wheat crops. Um, and as we know, last winter they had a tough time uh, with some very cold conditions that they planted actually in very dry conditions. So we did, haven't seen their good to excellent ratings be very good to start out the season. So that's going to really support our markets here domestically. And if you take a look at what we saw come out of France over the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, wheat was actually sitting at about 62% good to excellent. 
Last year at this time, they were 75% good to excellent. So that shows that there's a significant decline in the actual conditions of these crops in, over in Europe right now. Yeah, certainly. Well, you know, the European crop, not off to a great start. The uh, U.S. wheat crop, though, looks to be really off on a tear, specifically at Kansas City wheat down in the Southern Plains. We'll be getting crop progress coming out this afternoon. Follow us on Twitter, at Grain TV is where you can find us. We'll be tweeting when crop progress comes out. I think that kind of wraps up our show here for Monday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Grain TV. Have a great rest of your day.